Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopists. In today's tutorial, let's uh, talk about non-local means denoising algorithm. And uh, this is my personal favorite, especially for cleaning up computer tomography or CT images or MRI images or even any uh, scanning electron microscope or light microscope images. And this especially works well if you have uh, various regions of different types of textures. So this algorithm is pretty good at uh, preserving that texture and yet effectively cleaning it up. So let's have a quick look at a very high level. Again, if you want any uh, information in depth about any of these uh, topics I'm covering, it's much better if you actually look at the research paper published on this specific topic. So I'm only covering this at a very high level. So uh, non-local means algorithm, just like any other, I mean, as the name suggests, this is using or calculating the mean of a bunch of pixels. And non-locals means it's not just doing a local mean, meaning not just calculating the mean within the 5 by 5 uh, kernel size or a grid size or 7 by 7 or 3 by 3 that you define, but it's actually looking at these means at other regions, not just locally. I'll explain that in a second. Okay, So the estimated value at a given pixel is the weighted average of all pixels. Okay which is again very similar to the means, right? Local mean, if you do an averaging uh, algorithm, it's very similar, except the family of weights depend on the similarity between these two pixels. I bet that doesn't make any sense to you. So let me explain this. Uh, in other words, actually, similar pixel neighborhoods give larger weight. So let's use an image to understand this. So uh, every image, whether you take a natural image of outside scenery or every image has areas that have uh, similarities between them, right? So in this microscope image, there are a lot of these uh, uh, darker regions that look very similar. There are bright regions that look similar. So if you just look at like these three regions within this dark area, of course, they are not local, right? So this one is up here, this one is down here, this one is even further down here, okay? But these pixels on average are very similar. So non-local means algorithms is going to uh, assign larger weights, okay, to these uh, pixels when it's doing this, non uh, calculating this mean uh, uh, for areas that are similar. So for example, if uh, uh, this region, uh, the central region, and if you look at these other pixels, yeah, the weight of these pixels contributing towards this one is going to be much less compared to the weight coming from the similar pixels. So in other words, the algorithm in the background is calculating where the similar regions are and then assigning the weights accordingly. Okay, so these regions in the yellow over here, uh, if you're calculating, if your central pixel is right here, then these pixels and those pixels will have very large weights in calculating the mean of that compared to uh, the pixels in uh, showing up in any other color over here. Okay, so uh, I hope uh, I hope that makes sense. So uh, let's actually get into our uh, uh, spider interface so we can actually do these four or five lines of code to uh, to, to write this the non-local means starting with importing the right libraries let's go ahead and import our open cv so we can read our images numpy or we can actually read our images using uh, in fact let's go ahead and use uh, scikit image because non-local means that i'm going to use is part of scikit image anyway so from numpy uh, uh, import numpy as np these are the things i normally type and then later delete if i don't use those libraries so from scikit image let's go ahead and import Import IO, which is what we use to read images, and let's actually also import image as float because scikit image works with numbers in float. And uh, our non local means is available as part of sk image dot restoration. Okay, and let's import denoise nl means and uh, let's also import estimate sigma. I'll explain why in a second. Okay. In other words, we will just be estimating the sigma from our noisy image, which gives us a starting point to actually input uh, a, a parameter as part of our denoise uh, or uh, denoise NL means. So now let's go ahead and import our image and let's uh, import our image as float. Okay, and we are going to imread 
and my image is located under images and it's called PSE 25 Sigma noisy dot JPEG okay so far so good let me go ahead and run this until this point and everything looks fine okay so now what do we do um, let's go ahead and estimate Sigma first so Sigma estimate is uh, equal to NP dot mean okay this is the reason we imported estimate Sigma okay uh, so let's look at estimate Sigma from our image and uh, multi-channel equals to false I don't think I need that but let's go ahead and leave it so multi-channel equals to false okay it's working fine and it is estimating Sigma in my image as 0.0968 okay so I'm gonna use that as part of my one of my parameters that goes into denoising the uh, uh, you know using NL means so let's just call this denoised image or denoise image is what D noise NL means right so denoise NL means and our input is our image okay and then a parameter called H okay the larger H I mean the second parameter here it's it's this value and uh, again I'm I'm going to copy some values uh, directly from the documentation that they have actually used in fact the few lines of code I'm just showing you here is directly from the scikit image documentation so you may as well go there and look at other uh, ways of implementing this so I'm going to uh, give my initial H value as 1.15 times Sigma estimate and in fact that can uh, I can just leave it as one time Sigma estimate okay one point times uh, estimated uh, Sigma and then play with this H value okay larger H allows for uh, more smoothing between dissimilar patches okay so when you increase the H then uh, you get more sm smoothing between uh, patches that are uh, dissimilar and when I say patch okay we are supposed to give a patch size and patch distance when I say patch it's it's uh, let me go back to the uh, sorry just a second let me go back to the presentation so the size of these okay the patch size and the patch distance is something you can define as part of your denoising NL means okay so that's what we mean by patch okay so where are where were we well let's just say fast mode equals to true meaning it does things uh, in a fast way now again when the fast mode is true all it's doing in the back end is applying a faster uh, algorithm uh, uh, where it uses a uniform spatial weighting okay in all the patches if you do fast mode equals to false I believe it uses a Gaussian weighting uh, for uh, uh, to all these patches okay again uh, look at the documentation but uh, you can go ahead and play with this now let's define patch size or patch size equals to let's say five pixels and our patch distance equals to three pixels okay and you can also say multi-channel equals to false if it's a color image obviously go ahead and say multi-channel equals to true okay I think that's uh, that looks pretty good let's uh, go ahead and uh, im show or before and after images so let's just say original or original is my image and uh, let's also show the noised image is what did we call it denoise underscore image and uh, do not forget wait key okay and destroy all windows okay so I think we are all set let's go ahead and run this and there you go so on the left hand side is the original on the right hand side is the denoised image okay uh, so it seems to have done a decent job and uh, again if you want you can control some of these and then see how the uh, uh, how the output looks like so for example if I change my H2 from 1 to 1.25 let's go ahead and look at the the uh, images so here 
So this is how, again, uh, unless you put them together, unless you put them uh, right next to each other, it's very hard to uh, hard to know what the difference is. But uh, anyway, please go ahead and play with this. But this is how it is implemented. It's very straightforward and easy. But I hope you play with this, especially for CT images. It, it works, it works, uh, usually works very well. Let me put it that way. So thanks for your attention. And again, uh, in the next uh, tutorial, let's cover another uh, filter. Until then, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And thank you very much for your attention.